Excellent. So hello, everyone. Glad that you decided to stop by for the class this evening. And we will begin this evening with key 16, the tower. And this is a rather dramatic card. So let's see what's happening with it. In the Deceiver, Key 15, we were faced with self-inflicted bondage and how to deal with it. Here on Key 16, the Tower, we find the two chained characters of the previous card falling upside down from a tower. <laughs> Not looking good for them. So what is being played out here? And where did the lightning come from? In the tower tab, in the tarot tableau, this key is at the bottom of the second column of three cards. So let's take a look at that. Let's move you over. And let me see if I can grab the tarot tableau and we can take a look at it. So here you are, the second column, and this is where the tower is located. We're on the third row. So we're on the row of results. This whole row. So let's see where this takes us. So the second column of three cards. So these three cards represent the second stage of spiritual unfoldment called spiritual awakening. Based on the previous card, the Deceiver Key 15, we were asleep. There are erroneously, there we erroneously thought that all that we can possibly know is solely based on the experience of our five senses. Here we are. The alarm clock has just gone off and we are suddenly awake. And there's no snooze button. Time to wake up. So what is going on in this card? The good news is that the alarm is none other than the sun. So you see the sun up here. So that's what's waking us up. Mm. The feeling you experience at this point is like a flash of lightning. Your whole world is turned upside down. Let me let two people in. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to bring over a copy of the card so we can continue. Let's move this on over. And I think we can squash it in there. Yes, because I can't adjust this. <laughs> All right. So the good news is that the alarm is none other than the sun. The feeling you experience at this point is like a flash of lightning. The whole world is turned upside down, destroyed. Your experience is none other than a flash from the superconscious mind, your inner self, emanating from the center of your being. This is your first moment of clear vision. Here is the turning point and you're never quite the same again. And I love this little chicken. It is something like the hatching of a chick. Once the shell is broken, the chick can never return to the egg. It has entered a new phase of existence. Another life opens before it. So it is with mankind. At the moment of sudden illumination pictured by the tower, you receive an initiation. And from then on, you belong to a new order of creatures. There's no going back. The door is shut and locked. Ta-ta, it is gone. With a little observation, you will find that destruction is the foundation of existence. Our entire lives are spent in the disintegration of forms for the sake of building up other forms. Power is released by disintegration. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, the cars we ride in are all in the process of destruction from the very moment we put them into use. 
In the experience of spiritual unfoldment, awakening is distinctly a destructive pattern. All the customary wrong thinking and wrong acting must go. The false sense of personal will, of personal autonomy, of personal self-action must be destroyed. <laughs> Not a comfortable process. When you're forced to recognize the truth that some of your most cherished beliefs are false, the readjustment is not easy. I'm going to bring this down so more of you can see. The first chapter of the Gospel of St. John says, quote, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. That which has been made was life in him, and the life was the light of men." Unquote. From this you realize that not only all the good stuff comes from creation, but all the bad stuff too. We've been given the ability to choose what goes on in our lives, good, bad, or boring, That's where you being the um, the magician comes in. This is a really important role for each of us. But you can only start from where you are right now. No matter how much you jump up and down about the past, there's not one thing you can do today to make it any different. It's gone. Say bye-bye. The practical occultist has to learn that he cannot hope to reach any goal he may have set for himself without first figuring out where he is today, right now, and then making a plan to get rid of what hasn't worked so far. You can't have your cake and eat it too. That does look like a nice piece of cake, I will say. Break those chains that bind you. You've already made a good start. You are aware of your limitations. Now make an effort to transcend them. Your first step is to apply in your daily life the principles of the tarot keys. In the yoga classes that I attend, there is always the final pose called Shavasana, or corpse pose. You lie on your back and are still, allowing your mind to be still too, so that your body absorbs the activity of the class. This is really actually the most important pose in the class, not the one when you're standing on your head or doing little flip overs. <laughs> when you arise, your body is a new structure. It can be nothing less. The subconscious mind runs our bodies at the direction of our conscious mind. Make it practical, make it useful. You're the magician, the doer, do something. Get these lessons out of your head and into your body. Every cell in your body is conscious. Bring them into the light. Be kind to them. You'll make it a whole lot easier on yourself. Start with the basics. The number 16 shows you the way. It is a combination of six manifesting through one. This is a Hebrew way of looking at letter at numbers that they are read from right to left. So it is a combination of six manifesting through one. In key six, the lover's card, we saw the principle of right discrimination at work. The magician key one applies this principle through the act of concentration. What does concentration do? You'll only know that through practice and the experience created by it. Again, what does concentration do? I can't tell you. You have to understand that from within yourself. So you'll only know that through practice and the experience of that practice created by it. Get beyond the intellect and into the experience. It puts you in a very different place than an intellectual conception of an object. So how does this work? 
Place your attention on an object. It can be alive, like the interior of your body in a yoga class, or an orange or flower, or it can be inanimate, like a lit candle. By, by doing this, <laughs> it will reveal itself to you. Don't Google it. Don't look it up in a book or on a screen. Don't look at a picture. It will only speak to you in person, and it will. There's an orange exercise on this website, start there. And of course, we've already covered that wonderful orange exercise. Doing this will open a door that brings to you some measure of the awakening pictured here. Superficial observation will not suffice. You begin to give attention to the meaning of your thoughts, your desires, and your actions, the same as you would when you place your attention on an object. This is a skill that you must develop. This is a tool that you, that you have in your toolbox, which you must take out and start to use. And you will find that it comes to you automatically when you practice it. You are applying the principle of limitation to overcome limitation. That's a very interesting thought. You are applying the principle of limitation to overcome limitation. Once you get the hang of it, the results are amazing. Concentration takes some skill. So spend time on it daily. You will soon find that you won't place yourself in embarrassing situations by rash and unconsidered action. You'll think before you act, and then you'll act wisely. The planet Mars is related to key 16 through the Hebrew letter Pa, the letter of this key. In astrology, Mars is the planet of desire, war, and rash action. Yet, as we know, desire is the driving force behind all successful activity. Can you control it? Or will you permit it to control you? And that's the operative word. You permit it. You're not controlled by desire. You permit it. So let's see. Control of desire is not repression. The repression of the Mars force causes havoc and terrific destruction. So how does this work? Ah, and we've all been dealing with the subconscious mind, so we know it's going to have to have something to do with that. What do we need to do to find the balance necessary to control and manifest our desires? Desire is actually a normal part of our nature. The magician who wears a red cloak signifying Mars activity shows us how to do this. You must formulate your desires through intelligent discrimination. You have to choose carefully what you place in your life. Where you place your attention, you give life. Huh, as a co-creator with God, creation, whatever term you want to call it, you create life where you place your attention. It gives life to it. Be careful it doesn't bite you. You must formulate your desires through intelligent discrimination, and then make your mental images of the desired results sharp and clear. You want your subconscious mind to receive clear, definite impressions. And the strength card, as you recall, goes into great detail about how to go about this. And I'll remind you what the strength card looks like. Oh, there it is. So you have this amazing lion roaring, and she's just standing there very calmly. Everything's under control, sweetly, having a nice day all very calmly taken care of because she's coming from an, a, the consciousness of objectivity, 
not subjectivity. When you get, when you start owning some of your inaccurate ideas, things get a little crazy. So you have to be objective about life and then speak softly and gently to your subconscious mind to get it to deliver what you want, which it will. The Hebrew letter Peh, P, P H or F, means the mouth as the organ of speech. So it symbolizes the power of utterance. The letter even looks like it has a small tongue. Let's see if we showed that earlier. Cute little thing. There we are. There it is. And of course it is on the key, but I've got the key too far over so you can't see all the little goodies in the lower right hand corner. So we'll move that over. So down here are all the little symbols to remind us what goes with this card. Let me do this. It'll scoot us over a little bit. According to the story, well, let's see, I've missed a little. According to the story, all of mankind spoke the same language. Oh, that would be great. <sighs> I'll never have to learn German. <laughs> Man came up with the idea that he could reach heaven by building a really tall tower, a material-minded concept. Let's storm heaven. According to the story, God changed their speech into a multiple of different languages. Oops. The project was a failure. What the builders didn't realize was that language was a tool of their thoughts. If their thoughts were a mess, then it didn't matter if they all spoke the same language or not. If your thoughts are truly organized enough, you control the forces of nature and reach heaven right here through your word. No need for the tower. Just keep that in mind. But it is great knowing multiple languages. <laughs> I get to enjoy that because my husband does. And so when we travel, it makes it a lot easier for me. <laughs> Let's take a further look at the symbology and colors on this card. The gray stone tower sits at the top of a dark brown mountain the same earthy color as the deceiver. So the tower is constructed of 22 layers of brick. That's a familiar number. This is a reference to the Hebrew alphabet's 22 letters. So you could call it a structure of human speech. In some earlier decks, this structure was called the house of God because its gray color denotes wisdom. So here you have a house of God whose foundation is based upon the earth. This reminds us of the earthy deceiver, the previous card, who intimated that all you see with your senses is all there is. Therefore, we can assume that this structure is based on human error and ignorance. <coughs> This is similar to our personalities. We've constructed them with our false notions, but they are at the same time temples of the living God. Nice to know. The limitations and diseases in our bodies are dependent on the incorrect thinking fed from us to our subconscious mind. I think we've talked about that there are only three characters in this book. Superconscious mind, conscious mind, which is the male aspect, and subconscious mind, which is the receptive, receptive <coughs> female aspect. And superconscious mind holds both. So we're talking about mind here. And this is, even talking in this regard is a huge evolutionary step on our part. Because all through time, we've been learning toward the point where we realize that everything is just mind and that we're in charge. But the last 10, 20,000 years, we first prayed to gods, 
to plants, to stones, to objects, to rivers, to nature, asking for help with our needs. And as we placed our attention on all these objects, we began to get an idea of something else going on. We also started to give life to them by our placing our attention on them as objects of there's something else going on. We've always been creating. So the limitations and diseases in our bodies are dependent on the incorrect thinking fed from us to our subconscious mind. The tower is our spoken word manifested and elaborated upon by the empress based upon our superficial and race thought observations. Remember, she'll deliver everything you request <laughs> in spades. Ouch. <laughs> On the other hand, we see 22 flaming yodes suspended in the air. And there they are, over here and over here, thank heavens. 10 are on one side of the tower and 12 on the other side. So we've got the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet suspended in space. The 10 represent the tree of life and the 12 represent the signs of the zodiac. Thus we have represented the sum total of the cosmic forces. They also include the four elements of fire, air, earth, and water of the creative word. By hanging them in space, the key is stating that none of these cosmic forces has a physical foundation, unlike the tower. On average, most people think that their lives, think of their lives as being totally in a physical world. We eat, drink, breathe, and work in a physical environment. The ageless wisdom says this isn't so. The conditions we encounter and depend on in our daily lives are supported by the life force. For us to function here, certain physical conditions must be met, but they, they neither cause or support these functions. So now we're talking, going to talk about causation. It's not physical. Physical is the result. To make a change in your life, you must place your attention on the cause beneath the surface of the physical. Remember what I said, where you place your attention, you give life because you're a co-creator with God or creation. You are a shining star. There is a sun in the center of each of you. Thank you for joining the class. It's like having a constellation here on the screen. Just remember that. So to make a change in your life, you must place your attention on the cause beneath the surface of the physical. You have to go inside. And that's kind of tricky because where's inside in your body? Where's this mind that you need to get in touch with? This also, this isn't popular, but then the earth being round wasn't either for a long time. It was flat for a very long time in people's heads. Also, this can be demonstrated. It's just that there are very few who can do it. <laughs> Developing your skill in concentration will allow you to see the cause beneath the surface. That is a life-changing experience you don't want to miss. Of course, you don't get off the hook after you go through illumination. It's just more subtle, <laughs> all the things you have to work with. It is important to realize that we can't just forget about our bodies as we advance along the path of wisdom. There's no separation. Just a reminder between the physical and the spiritual. Your perception of change will be felt at the physical level of awareness. Our bodies must be prepared in order to hold the higher levels of consciousness. The flash on this card comes from a solar disk. 
Here we have the destructive agent of the cosmos preparing us for the change that is taking place within us. Note the disk is in the same corner of the key as that of the sun in the fool card in the upper right hand corner. The source of the flash is the lamp of the hermit, which is located directly above this key. So let's take a look at the hermit. Come over here, little guy. And there you are, right here. There's the hermit. So there's his lantern, and that's the flash coming out of the lantern. The zigzag form of the flash is a reminder of the tree of life and the movement. And remember, the tree of life looks like this. And the flash is from here to wisdom, to understanding, you go across, down, down, here, and zap earth right at the bottom there. So that's that flash of lightning. The zigzag form of the flash is a reminder of the tree of life and the movement of the life power among the 10 emanations of light on that diagram. The crown is a symbol of authority and willpower. Crowns are always willpower and authority. Here, the crown represents false material attainment. Mankind has done well for itself over the centuries. Here we are again at the Tower of Babel, attempting to storm heaven's gate by building up an earthly structure to a far off God. How big is your bank account these days? <laughs> Instead, man should consider preparing the temple of his own vehicle so that it is fit to hold the indwelling God already present. And just remember what we've mentioned in the past about the rich man coming up to Jesus and saying, I've done all the things that I'm supposed to do according to the law of Moses. And Jesus patted him on the back and said, that's fantastic. That is perfect. Now, sell everything and follow me. And the rich man said, no, I can't do that. I have to take care of this and I have to take care of that. In reality, it's not the riches that separated him. It was where he placed his trust. The trust is the pivotal item in that story. If you trust in God, you're gonna do well. You will have everything you need, family, friends, love, but he trusted in his riches, his material wealth. Who knows? He could be invaded and the whole kingdom come down. Trust in God first. And that's all that Jesus asked of him. And then he also said, when you give up everything for God, all will be added back to you. So it's not about wealth. It's about trust. And Jesus is really the good guy. <laughs> I just want to mention. Plus, there are other avatars that have come that are good guys. So who have created incredible examples for all of us to follow. So right knowledge begins with a flash of perception. We realize that we're not separate from the life force. This means all the time. Whoa. But with this, we also realize that we don't have a separate will from the life force. It's all one. We're all one. The current structure of our lives begins to fade away into the new realization that the life force is here for us. Yay, there's safety, <laughs> there's joy, there's laughter. The life force is here for us. This is personal. It's not intellectual. This is personal. This is your, these are the guys to hang out with, the life force. It also, mean, it also means that we begin to look at our family and friends and even strangers differently. We're not separate. What happens to them happens to us. 
What happens to us happens to them. You can't forget this. You're waking up. Yay, the alarm went off. So the falling figures are the direct male self-conscious mind and the receptive female subconscious mind that's contained within each of us. So the female is not your wife, your mother, your daughter. The male is not your father, your grandfather, your son, your brother-in-law. No, we're talking inside you. This is all happening inside each of us. So the flash of inspiration that hits us takes all our previous notions about them and throws them off the tower. In the tower, the figures are clothed. They're hiding their true nature from each other while mankind remains in a state of ignorant separateness. The man wears both red and blue to show a mixture of self-conscious and subconscious activities. The woman is shod with red, but wears a blue robe. Furthermore, she is crowned with a crown similar to that of the high priestess. Hmm. The domination of personality by emotion shown by these two figures has to be overcome. We have to get a little more objective about how we treat life and how we treat ourselves. The only way to do it is by seeing ourselves clearly. Take a step back. Wonder, why am I doing this? Why is that person doing that? And wonder about it. It's like looking at the orange and it talks to you. Look at your fellow man and let them talk to you. Of course, if you stare at someone, it'll maybe freak them out. So you got sometimes you can just stare at them by from behind, but you will get a reading because consciousness is in everyone and everything. And, and, it's read, and it's ready and willing to share with you. Okay, so there can be no division between these two modes of consciousness. The concealment and division between the two is over. The Mars force is a powerful stimulation of desire. Most of us are overwhelmed by a mob of complex and overwhelming desires. Many of them are unimportant and weak. As an enlightened being, you have comparatively few desires, but they are deep, powerful, and one-pointed. Go straight for your mark, allowing nothing to turn you aside. Make it the center of your being and flavor all of your actions and thoughts. Select your most important desire. Do not allow less important ones to interfere with it. Though easy to describe, this practice is difficult. The basis of mastery is controlling your desires. Get out your sword. Remember the sword? Yes. Get out your sword and make it easier through right discrimination. Remember your subconscious mind is standing by, ready and willing to happily deliver to you all that you need. So there we have this card. Any questions? This is the most interesting card. It's the awakening. It's the point of illumination. It's the point of, oh my God, there's more here on the planet Earth than I thought. And so in doing that, everything else looks different. All those cherished desires and hopes start to look a little different. That was an incredibly thorough <laughs> oh, thank and you. deep and very well uh, presented lesson and, on the tower. Well, I am glad you're enjoying this. Mm -hmm. I do have something we're going to do in between. It's called A Gift of Light to the Planet Earth. And let's see if I can locate it on here. There we are. Let's move us over. There's a lot in this lesson. Yeah. I mean, it <laughs> yeah. touches on yeah. everything and reminds me of stuff from the other part. It was like, <laughs> wow, this is <laughs> yeah. excellent.
So we, this is being recorded, so you can all go back and look at the recording and stop it. And Oh, and when you look at the recordings, go ahead and, and put like, check the like button at the bottom, because there is a like, you know, oh, L-I-K-E okay. button. So that, you know, other people, it, it tends to move it up on, uh, what is it, YouTube. So if people do the tower or whatever, this card will show up, the class, more often than some of the others. So yeah, there's a lot in here. You guys are really opening yourselves up to a first run through, as one would say. And um, it's supposed it's there's a lot here, but just think, you know all of this already. You just have forgotten. So remember. <laughs> No, don't worry. But not in our mind. <laughs> no, no. You're just going to remember in your body. You're just, yeah. It's like it's like uh, doing yoga and doing shavasana at the end. And I would be more in a state of, oh, my God, I made it through. I didn't die. I didn't break anything. And I'd be lying on the floor at the end of the yoga. And the teacher would say, this is the most important pose because your body is now absorbing everything you just learned. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the classes are about. At the end, take a breather and then just let it all kind of sink in. And then it will start expressing itself in your life. That's what's so cool about the subconscious mind. And that's what's so cool about the cards. I mean, you can just carry one of these around with you and you'll just start getting stuff. It's really neat. That's why I like it so much. Okay, let's do this little quick gift to the planet Earth. And let's see, so it's a visualization. So close your eyes, everyone. And uh, take three breaths very slowly. And last one. Now, in, now ra let your thoughts pass by, raise your arms just slightly and turn your palms face up. Place your attention on your palms. You have your eyes closed still. Your palms may begin to tingle. Now imagine each palm holding a ball of light. Be still keeping your attention on these two balls of light that you are holding. The light will feel like it's growing, getting brighter. Sit this way for a minute. Sitting quietly will relax your nervous system. With your hands still facing upward, imagine the planet Earth is floating in front of you between your hands just floating there, right in front of you. See the thin shell of the atmosphere, complete with clouds and weather patterns. See the colors of the land and the blue sea. Very slowly rotate your hands to face each other, with the planet Earth still floating between them. Now raise your hands just a few inches with the Earth staying between them. See the balls of light that radiate from your palms begin to merge into one light. You also see that the planet Earth is now completely covered with light. Note that our ideas about space and size are very different than God's. The creator is everywhere, so for it, the idea of size does not exist. So what you are seeing is real. It is the earth. Now as a gift to the planet earth and to all the beings residing upon it, imagine each one receiving this radiant, radiating light into their hearts and the cells of their bodies. See them relaxed and at peace, poised and balanced. Just imagine this in silence. Now bring the light that is radiating in front of you, toward you, and around you, around yourself, 
Just imagine it. Then extend it out to a distance of two to three feet from you in all directions. You and the earth, which is still in front of you, are now sitting in the center of a ball of light. Slowly draw all of the light and the earth into your heart. Just imagine it. Now lower your hands back to rest in your lap. Put a smile on your face and open your eyes. And Rolf Waldo Emerson said, quote, there is no great and no small to the mind that maketh all, unquote. That's so nice. I hope you like that. It's one of my favorite exercises. I know, I love doing that. Mm -hmm. So let's move along and check out the star. <laughs> okay, and here we have key 17, the star. We're at the bottom of the, we are at the bottom card of the third column of the tarot tableau. The two keys situated above the star on the tarot tableau are the empress, the principle shown on the first row, and the Wheel of Fortune, which is the agency on the second row through the Empress, through which the Empress will find her full expression in the star card. So I won't drag over the tarot tableau, but here's the Empress, the Wheel of Fortune, and then let me bring over the star. She is delightful. Here she is. Let's see if I can move us over just a little more. Get most of her in there because then we get all the little symbols in. Okay. These three cards together were called Revelation, the third stage of spiritual unfoldment by Paul Foster Case. The Empress taught us how the laws of nature work. Her crown, her authority, are the 12 stars above her head, as you recall up here. The 12 stars signify the zodiac, the 12 personalities of the cosmos. They are six-pointed to show her attainment in using the laws of the macrocosm. And of course, the empress taught us how the laws of nature work. On the star key, we have the lovely Isis Urania. This heavenly mother, earth mother, Isis, was also known as Hathar, the ancient Egyptian goddess for mother nature. She gives birth to the earth, the stars, and the whole cosmos. Isis is the manifestation of both the empress and the high priestess. And she's the one who tames the lion in key eight. She is most extraordinary and powerful. Isis is the epitome of all of the amazing attributes of the subconscious mind. And here we have the exaltation of the feminine. One of the functions of this tarot card is revelation. And here we have a beautiful woman revealing herself to you. And that woman represents the 12 personalities of the cosmos, her attainment in the use of the laws of the macrocosm and mother nature, all to be revealed to you by her. Wow. Its other function is meditation. This lovely water bearer represents truth. And as we will find, the practice of meditation reveals truth to us without disguise. And notice I said, all we will be revealed to you by her. And this is how the cosmos works. Creation reveals to you. 
you don't demand and ask for information. You wonder, because this way, all of your preconceptions are set aside when you meditate. You're asking for new information because you figured that you figured everything out. So what more, uh, you have all the book learning, everything that's great that helps you get along on the planet Earth. But now it's time to find out what creation has to tell you. And that's through meditation. Revelation also implies unveiling, disclosure and discovery. Here the unveiling is made to the seeker by Isis. Contrary to what you think may be happening here, you don't lift the veil. Isis removes it herself. Key 17 pictures something that operates from above the level of human personal consciousness. The disclosures made at this stage are not perceived by the physical senses. They are not arrived at by the reasoning mind engaged in external observation. You're not figuring something out here, quite the contrary. They come when the reasoning mind is completely stilled and the senses are sealed. Therein lies her supreme power. You see, we have all been trained so well on the earth in order to be able to put a roof over our heads and food on our plates and raise children and have families and tribes and jobs and all these wonderful things. And now it's time to get to know creation. And creation will take all that you've learned and add to it. It will add to it peace and joy and balance and all the things that have come into your life to this point will have a whole different meaning for you a whole different level of appreciation. So it's not just throwing everything out, it's also appreciating what you already have. In the previous key 16, the tower, we had two people falling upside down from a tower. The two states of mind that they embodied were completely upended. Here on key 17, we have them now represented by the two pitchers of water held by Isis these two pitchers of water. The symbol for spirit is drawn as ellipses on the sides of each vase. So there's your little ellipse there. We can only see two of them, but there are really two on each vase. The sum of the four ellipses implies that they stand for the four elements. So there's your fire, air, earth, and water which are on these two pictures. She fills the two vases from the pool and then pours the water back. Interesting. One onto the land and one back into the pool. From the vase in the woman's right hand falls a stream that sets up a wavy motion in the pool. As you can see down here. Note that this wavy motion is in the form of concentric rings, reminding us of the circles on key 10, the wheel of fortune. There we had the law of rotation, uh, one of those laws again, which dealt with the manifest world with all its limitations and mysterious laws. Here, all of the manifest world is being revealed through Isis. And once revealed, we may then know it very different thing than thinking about it. And to know it is to become one with it. This takes you to another place. If you actively meditate and you have a vision of something and then it shows you something, something moving, your eyes are closed, and then you've asked for, you're wondering about some event and then you get a picture because we first think in pictures and then maybe something will change in that picture and you'll know what it means. It's lovely. This wave emotion in the pool is the activity that is set up in our subconscious mind by meditating. 
So the water being poured back into the pool is direct modification of the cosmic mind stuff apart from sensory experience. In her left hand, she's pouring the stream of water onto the ground where it divides into five parts. So we have our little five parts here on the ground and then flows across the green grass. The five parts of the five senses. The ground is green. Again, the color of Venus and love. Do you notice it's everywhere on the ground is green. So her foundation is uh, based on love. Here is expressed that med meditation also modifies sensation and so unfolds higher and subtler types of sense experience. Here we have the purification and perfection of the senses by means of right meditations, supported by love. The weight of Isis's body is supported through her left knee. Down here, she's resting on the green earth. Earth on this card represents physical earthly existence. Green signifies growth and increase, reminding us of the Empress. Green is alchemical copper. So we've talked about when you say alchemical, copper signifies something other than, it, it signifies the attributes of copper, but not necessarily in the physical. So green is alchemical copper, which is a nerve center located in the throat, right here, in the throat. The Western alchemical metals are the same as the Hindu chakras. The throat nerve center, the thyroid, regulates and modifies all the systems in the physical body, including our heart rate and breathing. So here we have an expression of a system of support for our physical body. And it's also the center that has to be opened up for hearing. If you recall, that was important on this key, the teacher, the hierophant, the throat center, and it has a um, crescent moon over it. But you open that throat center and you hear the voice within. It's when you activate, you have to very slowly, carefully activate the Kundalini centers, the nervous centers, the ganglia, because if the rest of your body isn't ready for it, your consciousness is not ready for it, you can cause damage to your physical body. So that's why they're gatekeepers to all of this. Because we want people to have a successful, pleasant journey as they open up to the fourth dimension. You don't rush in, huh. you don't storm heaven. But there's a way for each person, each individual, to move along and evolve spiritually. And the body then evolves physically. So she balances herself with her right foot, right leg, by resting her right foot upon the surface of the pool. So it's not in the pool. We see that the earth supports her weight. But here we find that she gains her balance on the water, her act of meditating has transformed the unstable liquid water into something as solid as the physical earth. Water is the mind stuff of consciousness. So that's what's all being symbolized here. All the water in the tarot, like a stream of consciousness flowing through the cards, begins from the gown of the high priestess. So here is a combination of physical support balanced by direct communication with the subconscious mind. Truly, there is no separation between the spiritual and the material worlds. Use your will to decide to meditate. Here we go again, what you decide to do with your life. Use your will to decide to meditate. Meditation then uses the powers of deduction and imagination to direct our self-conscious mind. 
in strength. Isis tames the lion, the animal forces, and the human personality with ease and poise. She looks so relaxed. Just think the last time you had a temper tantrum and it didn't look like that. <laughs> and the whole world <laughs> was shaking you by the tail. Yes. <laughs> In strength, Isis tames the lion, the animal forces in the human personality with ease and poise. The knowledge we acquire in meditation is gathered from the all-encompassing memory of Mother Nature. Note the symbols in the lower right-hand corner of the card. So I think you can see them here and up here. The Hebrew letter assigned to key 17 is Zadi, which means fish hook. It even looks something like a fish hook. A fish hook is used for angling for fish. It is a quest that is a sort of feeling one's way, such as fishing. And we all know what fishing is on our computers. We tend to avoid those fishing experiences. <laughs> Here, the fish hook is used to symbolize an agency which we can use to investigate the unseen and the unknown. Interesting. Sadi's function is meditation. Patanjali, in his yoga aphorisms, defines it as an unbroken flow of knowledge in a particular object. It is a fishing for truth in the depths of the subconscious mind. The Hebrew word means conception, a germination of ideas. Meditation is deep reflection. So just remember, meditation is deep reflection. And of course, God created us so he would see his reflection, right? It is a continual dwelling on one idea and all that is associated with it in order for that idea to reveal itself to you. First, we get a stream of ideas relating to a particular object or question. As we become more and more identified with this object or question, we begin to see its inner nature or essence. We see the spiritual source, Isis, behind the object vibrating through it to you. It's an uplifting experience and consumes you. You are physically changed by it too. As a fisherman, we would use a certain type of bait so that a particular fish might bite. So when meditating, we must have a specific thought in mind before we start. Not just thing, you know, multiple ideas. We wanna have one simple thing. Imagine you're a fisherman sitting quietly in your boat on a calm stream. Your bait is set. Soon enough, the fish will bite. Just roll with it. Silencing the mind was discussed at length on the magician card. The practice of concentration, here we go again. It sounds like we really bring this up a lot, don't we? The practice of concentration is required before you can let go and meditate. Attention is the means that allows you to concentrate units of mental energy. Huh, concentrate units of mental energy. That's like going, that's like sending the light out instead of like a light bulb and a lamp, instead like a laser beam that can cut through lead. Same light. You end up being able to concentrate this energy, which then gives you the ability to direct it usefully. This is a real force. Normal sunlight on your face gives you just a slight feeling of warmth. If you use a convex lens and shine the sun through it, it will burn you. And we're co-creators co with God. Oh, what was he thinking? <laughs> <laughs> we really need to work on all of these little things. <laughs> to, de <laughs> to develop this skill and then be able to meditate, you may wish to use the, again, the orange concentration exercise listed on this website. I used it almost every day during the first year after it was shown to me, which is a long time ago. 
I still find it to be very helpful from time to time. It may take you a few weeks or even months to finally complete the exercise as described. Once that's accomplished, use it on a regular basis. It will be well worth your efforts. It's amazing how much more you'll see and notice. Okay, let's continue. Interesting to note at this point is that meditating is not just a mental exercise. You're using, also using physical energy. Meditation is the safest method to regenerate your body. It draws energy up from the base of your spine through your chakras without fixing your attention on any particular one. So we're not twirling chakras here. This is a good, safe way to heal and restore your body. Specific long attention on any chakra center is not recommended. You will throw yourself and your nervous system out of balance. The tarot, in the tarot, the Hebrew letter nun, noon, meaning fish, is the letter of the transition key. The ruling sign of that key is Scorpio. The Hebrew letter Vav, meaning hook, is the letter of key five. The teacher, oh, interesting. He's got, he's the hook, okay. It's ruled by the zodiacal sign Taurus. Scorpio and Taurus are opposites, but complements in the zodiac. The centers corresponding to them in the human body are also opposite and complementary. While meditating, the force which is expressed through the Scorpio center in the, of the human body located at the base of the spine is raised and then expresses itself through the Taurus center in the brain, which is hearing. The result is that you become aware of the inner voice. You hear it. This voice is the teacher who is also the revealer. And in key 17, we have a symbol of the revelation. That's what's being revealed, all of nature, all of what our creator has created. Aquarius rules this key. Aquarius is the water bearer, an airy fixed sign. Its astrological symbol is shown on the wheel of fortune, two wavy lines, one above the other. This is an alchemical symbol for dissolution. Hmm. In other words, dissolving something is the action used in order to start over. After our rude awakening on the previous key 16, here on key 17, all our past errors are being dissolved by the water bearer Isis through meditation. You start to realize there's a whole other world in there. I wanted to say out there, but it's actually in there. <sighs> the veil of darkness is removed by her cleansing us in the waters of light. Aquarius is also a symbol of the axiom, that which is above is as that which is below. So the axiom is internalized by us through the activity of this card which is meditation. The numerical value of Zadi is 90. The legs of Isis are each at a 90 degree angle. The suspended man also holds his right leg at a 90 degree angle. One of the functions of the suspended man is silence. We practice silence in order to quiet our mind, which allows it to enter the realm of meditation. Practicing silence includes being on silence for short, for set periods of time, even around other people. You do not have to speak. You do not have to talk endlessly. <laughs> you could even make a small sign and pin it on your shirt. I am on silence. I actually have one of those. <laughs> Thoughts up here come and go, but you let them slip away. The same with outer noises while we're sitting in meditation. They are just there, let them be. In yoga, the suspension is called samadhi. The mountains in the background of key 17 are the same as in the fool, the lovers and the strength cards. See all the little purple mountains in the back. Violet is associated with the planet Jupiter and Jupiter always means spiritual power and truth. It's the highest visible color vibration. So having them in the background means 
you're on the right path through this card in order to reach them. The tree in the middle distance refers to the brain and the nervous system. That's this little tree here. It looks like a brain and with a brain stem. The bird perched at the upper part of the tree refers to the frontal lobe of the brain where the personality resides. The tree trunk is the spinal cord and the sympathetic nerves and the ganglia. Our little red bird is an ibis or ibis, a fishing bird regarded by the Egyptians as being sacred to Toth. Its long bill is a natural fish hook. I think it's Thoth, was the Egyptian god of writing, magic, wisdom, and the moon. Thoth is identified by the Greeks with Hermes and by the Romans with Mercury. Hermes and Mercury were the gods of translators and interpreters. Well, that's interesting. Translators and interpreters. So while you're meditating, you're having these visions and pictures and you're getting able to identify what they mean. You get ideas about them, they're presented to you. So the ibis's red color represents the conscious plane of mental activity and indicates action. Yeah, not a whole lot of red on this card. Here, the little ibis reminds us that meditation is begun by and supervised by the self-conscious aspect of human personality pictured in the tarot as the magician. The magician also symbolizes the act of bringing intellectual activity to rest by concentration. The quintessence, also called the fifth essence by alchemists, is this great yellow star of eight primary rays. So there's that star at the top. The eight spoke to circles on the robe of the fool, the wheel of fortune, and now this star are all emblems of the quintessence. So in ancient and medieval philosophy, the fifth essence, also called the element ether, because we've got fire, air, earth, and water, is considered the highest element. It permeates all nature and is considered the substance that composes the celestial bodies. The quintessence is the essential power of spirit behind the energy transmitted to each of the cosmic world systems from their individual suns. The symbolism of the eight short rays will be discussed in key 19, the sun. So you've got all these rays, but the short ones will come out on key 19. The seven smaller stars surrounding the central star, these little guys all here, the white stars, are also eight pointed to show that they also are manifestations of the quintessence. They represent the seven alchemical metals, which are not the same as regular metals of the Western tradition. They are lead, iron, tin, gold, silver, copper, and mercury. These correspond to the seven astrological planets, Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mercury. The symbols for the planets are drawn on each of the stars. And of course, in the Eastern tradition, these seven are called chakras or interior stars. This is where the one force manifests itself in the human body. So this is to remind everyone that the East meets West in the tarot. The Eastern tradition existed for a great time and the Western tradition still continues the same tradition, just using different terms. So, the number seven or the septenary, this is according to Eliphas Levi, is the sacred number of all the 
theogenies and all symbols because it is composed of the triad and the tetrad. So we're talking four and three. It represents, or actually three, four, it represents magic power in its whole scope. It is the mind assisted by all elementary forces. It is the soul served by nature. It is the holy kingdom of the keys of Solomon, the great biblical number, the key of the creation of Moses, and the symbol of all religion. It is the soul served by nature. Nature will reveal to you the inner being of creation. It is also the number of charity, which is the crown of the spiritual edifice. It is the number of rest and stability. All things proceed from seven, return onto seven, explain themselves by seven. This number was represented in the temple of Jerusalem by the golden candlestick which was in itself a complete and magnificent pentacle. The septenary is the entire Kabbalah. This picture of Isis Urania on key 17 shows the third stage of spiritual unfoldment called revelation. It is the calm which follows the storm depicted by key 16. It is a period of quest and search, search within. The light is dim like starlight, but these stars are distant suns. Thus it is written, when you have found the beginning of the way, the star of your soul will show its light. Any questions? Let's see if I can move this little lady over. That was a nice class. I hope you enjoyed it. Very much. So there we are. We ran over a little bit, I would say. I like doing a little something in between. I'll have to come up with something next time. I like the... Uh, you can always find that on the website with uh, holding the planet Earth between your hands. That is really cool, especially because you really are. <laughs> yeah. Where you place your attention, you create. You are a co-creator with God. The whole point is to do this slowly so you don't shoot yourself in the foot with what you know <laughs> or wreck your nervous system. You got to drag the body along with you. So you got to be kind and nice to it and pat it and feed it and give it good stuff and be kind to each other. Yeah, it's there to serve you always. Let's see what we have here. So everyone, Thank you for showing up. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Ah, yeah. Someone who said, Dana is asking, how do we access the videos on YouTube? So I have a, um, I have a website called on YouTube called Gates of Light. Okay. So let's, let's see if I can do this without losing us. Go all the way up. And up, Gates of Light. Well, it work that way so anyway gates of light and it's on youtube and it if you do you gates of light you tarot that'll get you to my site right and it's got all of them there and i put the date of the class on it so you can click and watch them you know there's no charge or anything whoops see i lost you all again there we go Good to be on Thank my use so everyone it's my pleasure. I'm glad you all came. I look forward to seeing you all next week and we'll get to do this again. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Have a great evening. Thank you, Margaret. Bye. 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 Bye.